22 days. That's how much longer beauty salons are able to stay open in Afghanistan under Taliban rule. All shops across the country were given one month's notice to close down. That is according to a Taliban spokesman. It is the latest move by the Taliban to roll back rights for women who are already largely confined to their homes with bans on most work and study. Here's Katie Poglaze with more. Driving through the streets of Kabul among the brightly coloured shops is one last symbol of women being visible in the public life. Squeezing them out of sight, Taliban authorities ordered beauty parlours to be shut within the month, sending shockwaves for women already gripped in a chokehold. A salon owner who did not want to be identified for safety reasons told CNN the Taliban's order means her poverty-stricken family cannot afford the bare essentials. I don't understand why beauty salons should be banned, she says. My husband is jobless, and this beauty salon is the only means to feed my family. I have four kids. They need food and clothes. The Taliban seized back power in the summer of 2021, with thousands of terrified families flocking to Kabul airport, desperate to escape the group's barbaric rule. While the Taliban vowed reform, promising to be more progressive than their previous rule, women were quickly erased from public life banning teenage girls from secondary and higher education, and ordering non-profit organisations to stop their female employees from coming to work. The salon owner we spoke to says she doesn't know what more can be taken from them before there's nothing left at all. No woman is showing off her face with makeup outside and we're already wearing hijab in public, she says. This will further deprive women of their rights and freedoms. <laughs> As the Taliban slowly chips away at their rights, hope is slowly dwindling for some women. But others still haven't been deterred from raising their voices, even if it means risking their lives. Katie Poglay, CNN, London. Well, let's get a deeper understanding of the implications of the move. Joining me now in the studio is Fazia Kofi, the former deputy speaker of the Afghan parliament. Fazia, great to have you here on the show. Look, I think what one of the ladies said there, what more can be taken from us? And just watching that, that's moved you, hasn't it? It is very emotional. While we try to um, demonstrate our warrior side, not as a victim, but looking at what has been achieved over the last... 20 years and how much women were in the full front of all of that fighting for the global security and see that now they are kind of pushed to corner to become invisible and erased from all spheres of life is is not a very easy moment for me who have been part of all ups and downs of Afghanistan. Give our viewers a sense of some of the stories you've been hearing because, you know, our reporter Katie put into context in terms of slowly chipping away at women's rights, slowly pushing away, women away from civil society. What are you hearing from Afghan women? Um, women of Afghanistan are very, very disappointed, obviously uh, undergoing a lot of mental health pressure because can you imagine that they are being deprived of all the basic fundamental rights, the right to work, education, attending gyms, attending parks, um, going to public places. And their existence and beings is being questioned. Sometimes my colleagues and staff and like my um, uh, friends from Kabul tell me that you know when they get out of their homes, um, they stop them and tell them that you're not supposed to go to university or school, you're not supposed to go to office and work. Why are you out in the street? That feeling of being controlled yeah. by somebody as a human being is not a nice feeling. The whole existence of being uh, as a woman is being now kind of taken away from uh, by Taliban. And I imagine, you know, the salons, and it probably doesn't mean much to us here in the West who take it for granted, but for some of these women, this was a sanctuary when everything else has been taken away from this. This is where, where women could actually speak with each other, spend time with each other, I, su I suspect. Exactly. So these beauty salons were not only as a growing business because women lost the job in other fields and other areas. Uh, this was a growing business for them, but also a place where women could go and exercise their feminine kind of part of their, their themselves and talk to each other, social gathering. This was probably the only place where women could go without being questioned where are they going. But now they have asked them to stop that. Um, we are very much disappointed for the fact that when these edicts come, only that 
that is the time that women of Afghanistan news gets to the headlines and the world talks about it. Otherwise, about the, the centuries uh, and decades um, worse human rights uh, catastrophe, mm. the world doesn't really talk a lot about it. And it's as if it's one of the forgotten stories. And this is the disappointing part, because, you know, we believe that what is happening in Afghanistan could have a global consequence. Why do you think you've been forgotten, that women of Afghanistan have been forgotten? I think who's the whole failed? people of who's Afghanistan... Failing? Who's failing the women? Uh, the world. The world is failing uh, the, the women of Afghanistan because during the negotiation that the Americans had with the Taliban, the Taliban clearly said, and during the negotiation they had with us, I was talking with them. They clearly said that they will respect women's Islamic rights, yeah. that they will allow women to go to work and even become prime minister and foreign minister. This is something they have said during negotiation to get the deal signed with the Americans. Once they signed the deal and they got to power, this is what was given to them mm. basically. Now they started slowly and gradually suppressing women. They started from allowing, not allowing women to go to school, which has no space in Islam, has no space in other Muslim countries. And I think this is where the Muslim countries really should speak up and then the world should have a united position because the women of Afghanistan story must not become a politicized issue. Absolutely. Look, let me ask you this. Uh, Mahbuba Siraj, the, the activist and the nominee for the Nobel Peace Prize, has said there's no choice uh, but to talk to Afghanistan's new rulers. The time has come, she said, to engage with the Taliban. What do you make of that? Well, so the point is, the world has been engaged for more than two years with Taliban. They have been engaged for many, many years to get the deal signed, which they gave so much to the mm. Taliban. In the whole Doha agreement, there is no mention of women and human rights. It, this do, deal is basically a sub, uh, submissive deal to the Taliban. And since they came to power, there has been engagement at different level with different levels of Taliban from the world, from international community. Now, the question is, what have we achieved? So I'm not saying we should not engage, because obviously at the end of any war, there should be a peace and there should be engagement. What I'm saying is there should be a principled engagement, yeah. as a result of which we know what is, what is it that the world wants to engage with Taliban. You know, the further engagement without any principle position will only embolden them. An emboldenment yeah. of Taliban is not in the interest of the country and in the interest of the women of Afghanistan. And it might give them a free pass, diplomatic legitimacy. These are all concerns, no other, no, 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 I suspect, at this stage. Fazia Kufi, really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. Thank, Thank you. you very much.